Good morning. I'm Erica Manalo, a fourth year medical student, and we're going to perform a pelvimetry. Pelvimetry is done to assess the adequacy of the pelvis of the mother if it can undergo a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery. So let's start. So first, let us identify the parts of a pelvis. So this is the ilium, this is the pubis, and this is the ischium. Okay, this is the symphysis pubis, and this is the sacral promontory, this is the sacrum, and this is your coccyx. Okay, so now let's identify this is the linea terminalis. Linea terminalis is important because it demarcates your true and false pelvis. So anything that is above the linea terminalis, so anything that is above here, is considered your false pelvis. It is also your pelvic inlet. So anything that is below your linea terminalis is called your uh, true pelvis. It is also called your pelvic outlet. Okay? So let us also determine the shape of this pelvis. So as we can see, so the anterior-posterior diameter is wide and also the transverse diameter is wide. And also we can see here the um, pubic arc is greater than 90 degrees and the um, ischial spine is not prominent so this is a gynecoid pelvis okay so after that we measure the examining hand so from here from my index finger up to my knuckle it is 12 centimeters so approximately 12 centimeters and then if I combine this width of my fingers it is three centimeters and if I do this from here to here it is 10 centimeters so this is important to measure um, the pelvis so now we define what is um, diagonal obstetric and true conjugate so for the first is diagonal conjugate it is the only one that is measured clinically so it is from the inferior border of the symphysis pubis up to the medial sacral promontory so what we do is here, we do this, and so that is for the diagonal conjugate. And then now for the true conjugate, it is from the uh, superior border of your symphysis pubis up to the medial sacral promontory. We note that it cannot be measured clinically, but it can be derived from the formula of diagonal conjugate minus 1.5 or zero, uh, 1 to 1. 0.5 to 1 centimeters. That is for the true conjugate. And last is for your obstetric conjugate, which is the shortest anterior posterior diameter. That is from your medial symphysis pubis up to the medial sacral promontory. That is derived from the formula of diagonal conjugate minus 1.5 to 2 centimeters. So, um, you take note that this is the shortest. Approximately 10.5 centimeters. The true conjugate is approximately um, 11 centimeters and then your diagonal conjugate approximately 12 to 12.5 centimeters and then now we assess for the adequacy of the pelvis first is the pelvic inlet so pelvic inlet is only checked for the adequacy by your diagonal conjugate so if I cannot assess the sacral promontory take note that my um, the length of my fingers is 12 centimeters so meaning I cannot assess meaning it is adequate it is more than 12 cent um, 12 centimeters but if I can accessible or I can already touch the sacral promontory that means it is not adequate so since this is a gynecoid pelvis I cannot touch the sacral promontory meaning it is an adequate it has adequate pelvic inlet and then next for the mid pelvis so we assess five parameters in mid pelvis so first is your um, by by um, by ischial spines or the bisacromial diameter, if it can accommodate two to three finger wings, meaning it is adequate. Also, determine the diameter of the um, bispinous diameter. So the ischial spines, so it is, should be ten centimeters. Second, yon, and then third is you assess for the prominence of the ischial spines. It should not be prominent. If it is prominent, it is not adequate. And then fourth, is you assess for the sacral width. 
So for the sake room, we should accommodate three to four um, finger breadths for it to be um, adequate. It should be wide. And also, also check for the inclination of the sake room if it's anteriorly or posteriorly inclined. So anteriorly inclined to you, of course, posteriorly. So it should be. And also, it should be straight or curved. So it is nice if it's straight. Because if it's curved, it is hard for you to uh, uh, to have an adequate pelvis. And last, for the fifth parameter, is you assess the side walls for the mid pelvis. So when assessing the side walls of the mid pelvis, you assess for the ischial tuberosity, this, and also for the ischial spine. Sorry, it's not seen here. So if the ischial tuberosity is medial, so meaning it is in the middle in the, of the ischial spines, so meaning that would be a convergent pelvis, meaning that is a contracted pelvis. So it is not adequate. So the ischial tuberosity should be found lateral, lateral to the ischial spines. So if it is lateral to the ischial spines, it means it is, con uh, it is divergent, meaning it is an adequate mid pelvis. And then last, is your pelvic outlet. So there are three parameters for the pelvic outlet. First is the bituberous diameter. So it should accommodate four knuckles. So here you can accommodate four knuckles between your ischial tuberosities. And next is your pubic arc or your pubic angle. So here it is more than 90 degrees. So it is adequate. And last is the mobility of the coccyx. So you palpate for the mobility of the coccyx if it is movable or not. So if it is movable, meaning it is adequate. So that is all for the pelvis or the pelvimetry. Thank you.